Okay, let's jump on the CLI. First, we're going to take a quick detour to GNS3 to look at the topology such that it is R1, R2 connected by an Ethernet cable. Not very exciting. Uh, most stuff we're going to do is going to be on R1. The only reason we have R2 is at some point I'm going to launch a Telnet session from R2 to R1 to check out some command output while R1 is running a configuration replacement operation, specifically the configuration lock. The other thing is that R2 is a 3640. Come on now, baby. There you go. It's a 3640 running 12314 code, and R1 is, uh, you might not be able to see that. It might be out the recorded section, but it's a 3725 running 12415 code. And we'll see there is a slight difference in the parameters for the time option. Anyways enough dilly-dallying here let's get on the CLI okay so here we are on the CLI um, let me do a quick show run here just to show you I have nothing up my sleeve there we go nothing special going on almost all this is default I did put a host name obviously logging buffered no uh, IP domain lookup I have an interface going to R2 and then I have some configuration under the console line. I do have a local username password that I'm using for VTY, and that's Packet Lab Packet Lab with a privilege level of 15. Uh, nothing crazy going on. Okay, time to break out one of the commands we're going to be using quite a bit today. It's going to be the archive differences command. Not going to go into a whole lot of detail. Uh, suffice it to say, this command is used to compare the differences between two. Um, configurations in this case a startup configuration and the running configuration it's a bit long to type so I'm gonna go ahead and get working on that right now and probably just access it via the iOS history so it's show archive I believe it's differences or config first nope config differences and then you have to specify what configurations you're going to be comparing we're going to be comparing the startup configuration with the running configuration come on now baby there you go. It takes just a little bit to think. Hopefully, yep, that's exactly what we wanted to see. We wanted to see that there were no changes found, which means that these two configurations are exactly the same, which we would expect because I configured it and wrote it. So we're starting up with our um, our known good configuration, and we're going to start messing with the running configuration now and check out the configure replace command. So let's make some changes to the running configuration and one easy way to do that is to use the auto secure command and I have a video lesson out there that goes into the auto secure command in detail. For today's lesson if you haven't touched on auto secure before just know that what it does is it um, creates a number of best practice security configurations for your router and the reason we're going to use it is because it creates a ton of configuration with basically one command. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to issue auto secure and we're just going to use the no interact option. Basically, that means we don't have to give it any parameters. It'll just go ahead and do its magic hit enter. And you can see here it takes a little bit, but you could tell it's doing a grip of shit here. So it's, it's going to apply all this stuff. Let's go ahead and make sure that the configuration is different and we're gonna go just up arrowed to get to my really long archive config differences command and hit enter and we should see a bunch of stuff coming back here okay so you can see with these pluses that means that this is in the running configuration but not in the startup configuration and the minuses are just the opposite they're in the startup configuration but not in the running configuration normally rolling this back would be a pain in the ass there really is no uh, undo or rollback for this command so you would have to go through and start taking out these one by one you know no service pad go ahead and enable service pad go ahead and disable TCP keep alive in out and you can see it's it's a ton of stuff we have not written the running configuration to the startup configuration so our startup configuration is our pure as a driven snow known good working configuration so what we want to do now is we want to replace our corrupted running configuration with that known good startup configuration and normally we could just do a reload but as I said that's not always the best option and it's not always available depending on what your production environment is and what your change control policy is do we wait till after hours and just live with this nope we now have our new best friend configure replace command and let's see so we have to give it a source for the file and in this case 
it's going to be NVRAM. That's where the start config lives. And then you can, can you do a question mark? Yeah, you can see if you get here, you could do a question mark and it will show you some of the, I'm sorry, some of the files that exist in NVRAM that you could specify. So it's kind of nice because you just have to type S and then hit tab. There you go. And then these are the options that we went over in the theory portion. We're going to go through a couple of these today, but let's just do plain Jane, configure, replace, and here we go. We get our dialog here. It says this will apply to all necessary additions, blah, 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 blah. Here's the part that you want to know. It must be, which is assumed to be a complete configuration. In this case, not a, not a problem because we're using the startup configuration. So let's go ahead and say, yeah, let's rock this. And it's going to take a bit. If it takes a little bit longer, I will pause. There we go. So now we can see that it's done. Uh, it took a total of two passes and roll back done. And this is part of that configuration lockout. We'll look at this a little closer. Uh, if we do a show log, here's what was logged. Now that was from auto config. And obviously auto configuration has been, or I'm sorry, auto secure configuration has been modified because we got rid of it. But here's your configuration lock log and then your configuration basically unlock. So let's see, let's make sure by up arrow until we find our long ass command here. Hit enter. If everything worked the way that it should have, we'll get this exactly. So we've gone ahead and we have replaced the running config with the startup config. So we're back to where we were at the beginning. In order to understand why configuration replacement is so cool, we have to look at the other logical option that doesn't actually end up being an option. When we want to copy the running configuration to startup config, we issue the copy run start or just write command. And what that does is it does exactly what it says. So we would think logically that if you wanted to replace the running configuration with the startup configuration, you could just reverse the order of that and do a copy start run. And that makes every bit of sense logically, but unfortunately copy, and we're going to use startup configuration, but it's any file. Running configuration is actually a merge operation, not a replacement operation. And we're going to do a little CLI uh, experimentation here and show you some of the goofiness that can occur when you use that command. So one of the commands that we're going to look at is IP domain lookup. By default in this iOS version, this is a default. The way that Cisco iOS handles default configuration commands is that it does not show them in the configuration. Because IP domain lookup is enabled by default, it will not show up in the configuration. What I've done here is I've written the starting configuration, leaving that default. So if we take a look at the startup configuration, we will not see IP domain lookup. In the running configuration, I've turned it off with the no IP domain lookup command. If we take a look at the running configuration, we will see that command. So we have a difference between the configurations and I'll run through that real quick here. Nothing. We should see uh, no IP domain. There we go. And we can even get fancy and use our big command and we should see that the difference between the two configurations is that command right there.